Good evening folks, um, as some of you may remember the other day, um, I put up a little video saying that we were going to do some short videos um, about some of the animals that we keep and maybe some other natural history videos as well if we can. So here goes the first one, um, we are in our shed where we keep some of the animals, um, you may see this tank behind me, we can just see a little bit of him poking out here from behind the log. We have our common boa constrictor, his name's Bob, uh, and we'll probably uh, get him out at some point later on in one of the other videos as well, and we'll introduce him to him properly. Um, now these videos are going to take different shapes and forms. We had an idea today, we're going to do some make ones as well, which we can do with the kids. Um, I probably will have a few helpers on that one, so I can't guarantee how that one's going to go to begin with. Um, but we can try that one on a later date. But today, while I was in the shed and uh, checking on all the animals and doing a bit of feeding and cleaning things, um, uh, something presented itself, uh, which I thought would be quite interesting for our first topic. So our first topic is going to be about spiders. And this is where most of you are going to click off now because I've just said the word spider. Um, this one, no, it's only a little one. Um, we have a curly brown haired tarantula. I've also said that second word, tarantula, so everybody starts thinking of big, hairy, horrible things that are going to run up your arm and bite you in the neck. Not exactly true. Don't believe everything that you watch on TV. First off, um, it's not really a tarantula. The tarantula is a spider that comes from southern Europe. You're more likely to find it on holiday in Spain than you are running around in a big forest somewhere over in South America or Africa. Um, it is Lycosa tarantula and it's about the same size as a two pound coin. Um, now these things got a bit of a bad reputation um, during the 1800s and uh, when people went off to far flung places um, discovering new forests and new animals they give a name they already knew um, to the big hairy spiders that they found and they called it a tarantula um, now personally I don't really like losing that name because it conjures up horrible nasty images um, such as arachnophobia and eight-legged freaks and our job and many of my people that like me that do this sort of thing one of the things we tried to get past is fears and phobias so by using names that conjure up the wrong image it puts us on the back foot to start with so we're trying to gonna go forget all that one today um, and we're going to introduce um, the the little one we've got down for you he's on the floor at the moment just between my legs um, but the main reason that uh, we we decided to talk about spiders as we said is we found one of our spiders and it had molted now for those that don't know for a spider to grow it has to molt and everybody starts looking at you confused when we start talking about molts and spiders usually. So the first question that we have to ask ourselves is, where are all the bones on a spider? Now, most of you now will probably still start shouting on the inside. Well, wrong, because they're on the outside. Have we ever heard of an endo or an ectoskeleton? So endo means it's inside. An ecto skeleton means it's on the outside. So all us humans and your dog at home and your cat and your rabbit and anything else you've got has all got an endoskeleton. It has bones on the inside and it's all wrapped in a nice bit of skin. For a spider and scorpions and most other insects or all other insects, um, they are on the outside. They have an ectoskeleton. Now this ectoskeleton is very tough. It's hard, it's to help to protect the animal, the spider, the scorpion, the ant, whichever one it is. It has this ectoskeleton to protect the body and the mushy bit inside. So when it wants to grow, what it has to do, it has to get rid of its exoskeleton and crawl out so it can start to grow. Now when a spider, we'll stick with spiders for this one, when a spider crawls out of its old skeleton, its new one that it has grown underneath its old one, is soft and squishy so what the spider does it pushes all the fl all the fluid around its body as quick as it can and stretches all them new skeleton all that new bone until a day or so it then hardens off and the spider is as big as it's going to be until next time it molts just as a bit of a side note if anybody ever wants to go about it buy a spider from a shop most shops will tell you the truth, but if you see a great big one and it tells you that it's a baby, I'm afraid they're telling you a fib. 
because it takes quite a long time for a spider which is usually tiny when it first hatches out of its egg sac to grow into a big spider like that it takes quite a long time it could only take anything up to four to five years so it's not a baby spider now this one i've got down in the tub here is actually coming up for a year old already it's molted it's shed its skin about five times it's shedded it five times while i've had it okay and it's probably done it once or twice beforehand as well so it's molted its skin quite a few times um each time it has it gets a little bit bigger now i'm going to fall it out in a second and i'm going to show it you um and it isn't that big just to prove so let me take the lid off the box So, I don't know if we can take this camera. This is where it all goes a bit wrong now. There it is. One cute little spider. There you go. So, I remember what it was called. It's a curly brown haired spider or tarantula. Um, you can see it's got lots of curly brown hairs. Dead easy to realise why it's called a curly brown haired tarantula. Um, now, these hairs on its body have lots of little jobs. The hairs on its legs are for sensing. Now, spiders haven't got any ears. They can't listen. They can't hear you. But what they can do is they can feel the air moving around them. So in one way, this spider is hearing me talk because it's hearing my breath and feeling the air move around itself, which is one of the reasons why it's sitting there perfectly still. Yeah. Now it uses these hairs to help to catch its dinner as well. So it's sensing the environment around it, it's sensing the air around it. Now the other hairs that it has are on this big ball bit at the back. They're called that's called its abdomen. Now, for your big hairy spider, your big hairy tarantulas, they have a couple of different tricks up their sleeve if they think they are threatened. Now most people think that a spider is going to run up them up their arm like we said but up their arm like we said before and bite them in the neck. All spiders, all spiders don't like to bite. It actually takes up too much energy. So what they want to do first, if they feel threatened, is guess what they do? Zip, they run off. Don't stick around, they're not going to have a fight with you or anything like that. They're going to leg it as fast as they can. The second thing they do, if you think it's a good idea to go chasing after their spider. If it's one of these guys, this is where the other hairs come in, the ones on its abdomen. What it'll do with its back two legs, it'll rub them against its abdomen and it'll start to knock these hairs off and they'll start flying around in the air. Okay? Um, and they've got a really special name, a really long name. It's called They are called hydrostatically charged. Now, does anybody want to have a guess what that means? Hydro, if you look at that bit first, means water statically charged just means attracted to in one respect so they are hydrostatically charged which just means they are attracted to water so where is the most water in your face simple up your nose in your mouth in your eyes so these hairs that this spider has just knocked off go floating around in the air and they are attracted straight to the face of the predator that's trying to chase after this spider so then you spend the next five minutes scratching at your face because they're all a bit itchy while the spider runs off. Okay, so that's two times it's told you not to follow it. If you still think it's a fun idea to go and chase this spider then, what the spider will then do is it will turn around to face you. And it will raise up the front two legs. And basically he's telling you to go away or else. Because what he's also just done is spider's teeth are a bit like my fingers. They're tucked up underneath yeah but they're on a hinge so they can raise them out so as the spider raises up its teeth are out as well they're called fangs yeah or salicera yeah they're sort of sticking out like that and then if you still think it's a really fun idea to go after the spider after that and start poking it that is when it bites it has told you three times that it doesn't like you wants you to go away on the fourth time it doesn't tell you okay so spiders really 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 don't like to bite they will do lots of other things before they even attempt to try and bite you and as you can see this one on my hand hasn't moved anywhere and trust me it is alive and just to prove it i will give it a bit of a poke give it a bit of a poke see there you go we're having a bit of a move around now 
but he really doesn't like to yeah so spiders are quite quite useful little things spiders eat all the nasty things that we don't really like flying around flies mosquitoes all the other but nasty buggy insects that can potentially carry disease these things help to keep us nice and clean yeah so spiders are very 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 useful creatures right i'm going to pop him back in the box now if i can get him off the finger There he goes, he's off. <laughs> okay, so let me go get the camera. And what I'm going to do is turn it round. So hopefully we can see. Now, if I'm holding it right, you might be able to see uh, what looks like another spider in there. There. That is the skin. So if we turn it around again put that back there there that is the skin of the spider that I've just had off now you can see all of it and you will see these things in your house as well your house spider does this too so this is the bit where mum's probably gonna go ooh don't like this but when you find a spider around your house that you think is dead, blow on it. If it blows away really, really easily, just floats off, then it's not a dead spider, it's a skin. Yeah? Which means there's a bigger one somewhere. But just think, that bigger one is helping to catch all the creepy crawlies in your house that you didn't want there before. Now... I could carry on talking about spiders for hours and hours and hours and hours. But what I wanted to do as well, while we were just talking about spiders, is just talk about some of the British ones. There are about 600 and odd species of spider in Britain. Now, people often say that they've been bitten by a spider in this country, which is quite possible. There are apparently 16 different species that are big enough to be able to bite us. But that's a lot of other species that can't, yeah? Now, the ones that can, there are only probably maybe three or four that really, really do bite people. And there's probably only one that can actually do you any harm whatsoever. And only does any harm if you're not very well in the first place. Yeah, a bit like what's going on at the moment with coronavirus. But most of the others can't really do you anything you might get a bit of an itch on your finger you might have a bit of a swelling where it's bit you but that's going to be it but i have one in this shed with me right now it is called a cave spider or a cellar spider it's a, it's a proper name its scientific name is Falcus phalangeloides which i think is great i love that word um but i'm going to try and show you him as well and it's over here. Now, they can't do the things with the hairs that we were talking about with our curly hair brand, uh, tarantula before. Um, they haven't got hairs over their body that they can flirt off at things. So what they do in their web to try and dissuade, dissuade people or dissuade other animals trying to eat them is they go mental. They start swirling around in their actual web. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to poke the one over here a little bit and see if we can actually see it do it. So... Ugh. Saying that, it's wandered off and I can't find it now. It has literally wandered off. So I can't do that, but it's also also known as the daddy long leg spider. Um, and again, it's a completely harmless spider as long as you leave it alone. Now, um, I'm going to finish there because we've waffled, as we said I would. I've waffled for quite a bit. Um, so if you've got any comments on the video, if you want to ask any other questions, if you want me to do anything else on spiders or any other animals, then please leave your comments below um, and then we can take it from there. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you learned a little bit something as well and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Night, night guys.